Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first snapshot of the new year. This is snapshot 19W02A and there's a lot of changes in this week's snapshot so let's go ahead and get started. The first new item we're taking a look at today is the campfire and this is the campfire right here ladies and gentlemen. Looks like this. You can see it's like a little bit of a flame animation on some what appear to be like logs and then there's a lot of smoke that is created with this campfire as well. So, yeah, you can actually craft this campfire here. If I go into the crafting bench and click on campfire here, you see it takes logs, sticks, and a piece of coal. You can also use charcoal, and these can be any type of logs right here. And that gets you your campfire. So the campfire can be placed down anywhere in the world, just like that. And the cool thing about this campfire is you can have it lit, but you can also uh, put it out as well. So if I pour water on this, you'll see it puts the campfire out, and then there's like a, like a burnt charcoal... Uh, left over. Now you can also relight it with flint and steel. So there you go. Just right click to relight it uh, as you would, you know, just put down normal flames. But the campfire actually cannot have the fire spread to nearby blocks. So I could have like a wooden stair right here and this would never burn. So campfire is a little bit safer than your traditional flint and steel uh, with, uh, with fire. See right there, it pretty much instantly caught that wood stair on fire. But yeah, that'll never happen with the campfire. Now you can't sadly put out the campfire with splash water bottles yet, so there are some limitations. Um, and you also can't... Let me just quickly get this back. You also can't use a fire charge to light the campfire yet, so there's still a little bit of functionality needs to be added. But in general, I think it's a pretty cool block, and there are also some other interesting things about it. Couple interesting things about the campfire here. Number one, if you listen closely, you can hear the campfire crackling. Another interesting thing about these campfires, if you stand inside of them, you will take damage, but you don't actually catch on fire at any point. Uh, so what I mean by that is you actually don't actually like light up. So if I go ahead and stand in that fire, you'll see I actually catch on fire, but that is not the case if you stand in the campfire. You just take damage. You don't actually have the fire animation playing on you. Might be a bug, might not be a bug, but uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. A couple other things about campfires. They do indeed put off light, as you can see. If I come over here and place one down, lights up the area here. But they don't have a light level that's very high. If we go into F3 mode, you can see it gives off a light level of 9. So, yeah, even... You know, at this block here, you can have mob spawns. So the next block away from the, uh, two blocks away from the campfire, you can have mob spawns. So it doesn't work as a very effective uh, way to prevent mobs from spawning in an area. However, it does serve quite nicely as a signal. Uh, so you can see, we can still see the smoke from those campfires over there. And if you put a hay block underneath, then we should see this produce a little bit more smoke. So let's just see. Yeah, you can see compared to this campfire, the smoke from this campfire is going much, much higher. So putting hay bales underneath of your campfires will increase the distance you can see the smoke from and make the smoke go a lot higher. So, wow, that's actually going like, that's, that's going like 40 or 50 blocks up right there. Wow. Maybe less, maybe like 30 blocks, but still. If, let's see how far away we can see this from. We can probably see this anywhere inside the loaded chunks. Yeah, I can still clearly see that. You can also see the the smoke from the other fires, the other campfires, but that one in particular is readily apparent. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I can still see it all the way over here across this huge bay here. And I can still see it from here. Yeah, so about right here. So several hundred blocks. So you can see the smoke from several hundred blocks from the campfires and putting a hay bale underneath of the campfire makes the smoke go higher. So that's pretty cool. The campfire can also cook food as well. So all you got to do is simply right click on the campfire and there you go. You see we put a, a chicken right there. We can also put a beef in there. Let's put a mutton in there and let's also put a rabbit. So you can cook up to uh, four items at one time. Although this is a little bit slower than the conventional furnace, uh, so the furnace is still much quicker, but yeah, this thing can cook meats, and if we just wait a minute here, we should start to see some of these meats uh, popped off uh, once they're cooked. So yeah, you can see it takes a little bit of time, but in the end, there we go, yep, we'll see the chicken pop off, and then the beef, 
There's our cooked beef, and the mutton pops off, and then the rabbit at the end. So the cooked rabbit at the end. So we can pick those up and eat those, and yeah. That is another functionality of the campfire, and we can just go ahead and pop in some more chicken, and it'll cook that up as well. So the next logical step would be to see if we can actually automatically put items into the campfire, because after all, this uses no fuel besides the one coal we used to create it, and also the logs and the sticks, but it turns out you actually can't do that, so... Yeah, you see right here, the raw chicken does not go in. If I go ahead and put a hopper on top here, uh, raw beef, we'll put some in there. See, it doesn't go in either. Uh, so you do have to use your right click to actually manually put in the meats into the campfire like that. Um, you can do something like once you have the meats in there like this uh, and the meats pop off nearby, you could have like hoppers or a hopper minecart or something uh, collect the items here. So this will work and eventually you'll get, you know, cooked chicken in here. Uh, if we just wait a minute, but yeah, I think it's a good trade-off, you know, you, you're basically waiting longer, but you don't have to spend fuel to cook up your meat here, so I think it's a good trade-off compared to the furnace. Another new block that's gotten functionality this week is the cartography table, which looks like this, and of course the recipe for this is just simply two planks and two pieces of paper and a crafting bench like this. So this now has a right-click functionality, if we right-click here it opens up an interface, and you'll see we have a giant map here. This is basically a preview of the output, which is this slot. And then we have two input slots right here. So if I go ahead and right click on an empty map, obviously that fills out the map as you'd expect. And then if I go ahead and open up the cartography table, we can put the map in this top slot here. And it does have to be the top slot. You can't put it in the bottom slot. Uh, so put it in the top slot here, it gets a preview of the map that we just made. And then we can put things in here to do things to this map. And this, this basically shows the output uh, as well. So if I wanted to, let's say, copy this map, we use an empty map along with the map we filled out. You see it gives us a preview of two maps, and then we take it out of the output, and it gives us two maps with the same map on it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if I go ahead and put this map into the cartography table with a piece of paper, you see it shows a preview of the zoomed out map. So if I take this out now, you'll see it'll be zoomed out just like so. Uh, and then there's also a new functionality. The new functionality is that you can now lock maps. So let's say, let's say I had two maps. Uh, let's say we had, let's just get out, or actually let's just zoom this one out as well. Uh, so we'll put this in the top slot, paper right there. There we go. So now we have two maps which are identical. Uh, so this map here and this map here, they're the same map as you can see there. So yeah, if we have two maps that are identical here, um, and we go ahead and lock one of them by putting a map into the cartography table with a glass pane, you'll see this lock symbol comes up. And this means we can now no longer uh, have any changes made to this map. So we can't explore any further. Uh, and we can't zoom out at all. So if we go ahead and just go in like this, you'll see, we now have two maps pretty much the same, but the one on the right is locked. So now if I fly this way, you'll see the one on the left is updating, the one on the right is not. So that is how you can now lock maps if you so desire. One final thing with regards to locked maps, uh, just to reiterate what this means as well, you also can't zoom out the map any further. So if it's locked, you can't zoom it out. So that's what that big X right there is. Uh, whereas with a normal map like this one, which is not locked, uh, you can zoom out. Um, so, yeah, that is one thing you can't do with locked maps, but you can add banners still to locked maps. So if I right-click here, even though this map is locked, you can still add, like, banners and such, which I'm wondering what happens if we get out here to this uncharted area out here, and let's say we put a banner down, let's say, like, in this region. Let's see what happens. If I put a banner down here... Nice, so we can have like, you can have like banners in un, uncharted territory. That's pretty cool. <laughs> nice, okay, so yeah, that uh, is now possible with locked maps. Interesting. The next block to receive some functionality is the lectern. Looks like this, and you can craft it up just by four slabs and a bookshelf in that configuration right there. So that gives you your lectern. Now the lectern can actually now be right clicked with a written book. And you'll see it puts the book in the lectern. And the cool thing about this is we can actually read it. So if we right-click again now, 
you'll see we have ourselves a uh, yeah book right here. So yeah, we have the ability to turn the pages back and forth, obviously, within the lectern. Uh, when we click Done, it'll actually save the page we're on. So we're on page, let's say, 6 right there. And we leave and go somewhere else. Or if somebody else comes, uh, the book will persist and be on that same page when you re-enter the book. So, yeah, it sort of persists. The book sort of persists across players. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, also, there's also some redstone functionality that has been added to this. So let's take a look at that. So let's talk about the redstone functionality of the lectern. You can see here we have a comparator and a repeater hooked up. And essentially what these do, the comparator measures the progress through the book of any book placed in the lectern. And every time you turn the page, the lectern will pulse out a signal uh, either to the side or it also works underneath of the lectern itself. Um, so let's just go ahead and see that. So if I put in this book here, you can see obviously we're on page number one right here. Uh, so we have a signal strength of one over here. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. For instance, I have a one page book right here. If I were to go ahead and put this in here, let me take this one out and put the one page book in. Yeah, one page book, it outputs a signal strength of 15 immediately because you're already at the end of the book at page one. So yeah, that is that. We'll go ahead and take this. Uh, same thing if you have like a two page book. See, we're on page one here. So it outputs a signal strength of one. But if I turn the page, boom, signal strength of 15 because now we're at the end of the book. So that sort of gives you a view of how this thing works. So let's go ahead and go back to Steve's Travels, which is a 10 page book. And yeah, you also notice as I go through, like not only does the comparator signal strength increase down this way, uh, down the left hand side, and then if I come back, it, it dials back the comparator signal strength, which opens up a lot of possibilities for things like really simple combination locks using this lectern. Uh, but every time I turn the page, front or back, you'll see on the right side, it outputs a signal. And this also does work if I just uh, quickly grab some redstone dust. This also does work underneath of this. So if I go ahead and go in here, you'll see the redstone dust down there also flashes on and off. So yeah, a lot of really cool redstone functionality with this, especially with the comparator and the pulse in one single block, which is the lectern. So yeah, really, really cool block. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see what people do with this in the near future. There were also some important bug fixes this week. One important bug fix is that fireworks shot from crossbows will now no longer slide across the ground until their fuse runs out and then detonate. Instead, whenever they touch the ground, they will basically detonate instantly. So if I shoot it like right here, see, yeah, whenever it touches the ground, it detonates instantly instead of just floating across the ground uh, like it did previously. So this does have some gameplay implications, namely that you can no longer shoot around quarters with fireworks. So you used to be able to shoot this and it would hit the wall and then continue with some momentum in this direction. But now whenever it hits the wall, it just simply hits the wall, explodes, and that's that. Another bug fix is that in multiplayer, the bell will now have an animation when another player rings the bell. And also I just want to mention that, uh, yeah, the sound that the bell makes sort of a metallic clang, which is different from what a lot of people showed in the last snapshot. A lot of people actually got it wrong, uh, and it worked for some people for some reason as well, so just wanted to play that. And finally, I want to mention one other thing about the bell. Uh, if you activate the bell off its principal swinging axis, so in this case, it's uh, this way right here for this bell. So if I click on this side, it works. If I click on this side, it works. But if I click on this side, it won't work because that's not how bells function. <laughs> so that's it for me from Snapshot 19W02A. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. As always, guys, thanks again for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.